Hey all, I've got a neat treat for all the PlayStation fighting game fans today. This video series will be spread out into many different episodes and will cover a wide variety of subjects within title fight, from introductions to the game's history and unseen elements. In addition, you may have been referred here by Beta64, who has a video of his own. I recommend that you check out his video before mine, as his video is much more concise. Before I begin, I must stress this is not a representation of the retail game itself, and is merely a list of documented differences that I found in my own ventures. I'm taking a bunch of information about PlayStation All-Stars and Title Fight from the PlayStation All-Stars Wiki, which I will leave a link to in the description below. I was also assisted by Half Mile Ride, as well as Ray Mono from TCRF, Cree 4 key from the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale Discord, Neko Run of his own Discord channel and Twitter feed, Maximum KOF of the Apes Will Escape Discord channel, as well as the PlayStation All-Stars Round 2 movements. I will also leave a link in the description for both the Ape Escape Discord channel that has been extremely helpful in regards to the Ape Escape parts of this series, the Apes Will Escape Twitter feed, and the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale Discord channel. This game has had considerable differences over the years, and it has had an interesting development cycle as a result. We'll only be covering the content that is related to this build and the final retail build. We may briefly discuss the closed beta, the open beta, and so on, but this is for title fight and the final predominantly. This game started off being a game of capture the flag. Now, there's a lot more about the game's history, but we'll touch on those details as we go. PlayStation All-Stars was originally proposed to Naughty Dog in a preliminary phase. This original proposal was just on paper. That in and of itself never took off as Naughty Dog declined because they were developing The Last of Us. As a result, Sony decided that they wanted to create an entirely new company to make this game. Enter Broodworks. Broodworks was an entirely new company that Sony made expressly for the purposes of making PlayStation All-Stars. Then, sometime after November of 2010, Broodworks changed their company name from Broodworks to Superbot Entertainment. They, along with Santa Monica Studios, together with Sony Computer Entertainment, decided to publish PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. One thing to note, however, is that PlayStation All-Stars was always going to be the retail name, whereas Title Fight was always just a development title name that people referred to favorably. Before the acquisition of this prototype, I had never played PlayStation All-Stars or many of the games within the game. Some I have played, such as Jack and Daxter, and others I have not. I have, however, highly enjoyed Sly Cooper, Uncharted, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Bioshock, Metal Gear Solid, Ape Escape, Medieval, and Gravity Rush. In the form of concept art, there may be evidence to show that there may be a lot more to the game's intent than it led on. Let's take a look at these concept art pieces to show what I mean. There have been several iterations of title fight in PlayStation All-Stars, even though they're the same game. To me, and several others I assume, the different names represent two different eras of game development, sort of. And as a result, they give meaning to what stage the game's development was in at a specific time. This is the earliest title fight logo that is known, and is theorized to be as early as almost two years prior to the game's release. This is the second title fight logo that we are aware of. This title fight logo appears to be dated from early November of 2011. Finally, we have the title fight logo in the build that most of this video is centered upon. This build of title fight was originally from early December of 2011 and is theoretically the same logo up until the name change between January and April of 2012. Title fight, or rather PlayStation All-Stars, was a game of hope, a game of dreams, and a game of fun. It was published by Sony Computer Entertainment and developed by Superbot Entertainment and Santa Monica Studios. It was made to ensure that the efforts of not just the company, but the fans and developers of the games are known and heard to say thank you to the gamers, such as Michael. Unfortunately, that's not really how it ended up. There are a number of reasons for this, though. The first and foremost is that while PlayStation All-Stars was a good game, it gained a lot of undue stigma for being a clone of Smash Bros, which it really isn't. 
Secondly, there was no Crash, Spyro, or other PlayStation-based icons that got to anywhere they are today. And thirdly, according to some fans, the area of the presentation feels a little too small and confining. There are many other reasons, of course, though. However, PlayStation All-Stars is still an enjoyable experience. Let's continue to enjoy it by talking about its predecessor, title fight, and some of the most unique things about that version of the game so we can celebrate the beginning and not the end, and remember the best parts of this game. This build of Title Fight was built on December 7, 2011, specifically at 1900 hours, 4 minutes, and 6 seconds. Or rather, 7.04 p.m. This game is loosely about 11 months prior to the release of the game for the resale market. Within this game are about 8 stages. Two are highly unfinished, as well as 4 playground stages. These stages in total are Practice Small, Practice Medium, Practice Large, Hades, Dreamscape, Metropolis, Sandover Village, Killzone Invasion, Alden's Tower, Stowaways, Paris, and the Playgrounds. We will get to the practice and playgrounds later in segment 3, but first I want to comment about these images. Sandover is basically the same, however if we look at this small picture, we see that it actually has a lighthouse, in addition to the big image having some berries or something hanging from the ceiling of Samos' hut. Dreamscape has a castle in the smaller picture, as well as using the basic form from an earlier build. The larger picture has mushrooms and leaves hanging off the trees, as well as a different background. It also has an arrow pointing to the right, which is usually where the level ends, very reminiscent of Tomba. Invasion's small image looks like a PS2 demo disc icon, I think. But we can make out Parappa, Kratos, Sweet Tooth, and Fat Princess in this image, as well as Sunshine, it appears. It's possible that there was even more to this stage at one time. The larger image appears to be inside of a warehouse of some kind. Warehouse 81? Just like the small image, however, there's an unidentified character or prop or something in the bottom center that is probably an earlier Sweet Tooth. Hades is basically the same that we know in both the big and small images, though we can see this image much clearer here than in the skybox for the level. The images from Metropolis are a bit different than we know. It's a bright sunny day, it has a golden statue of bark, different trees in the planters, an entirely different city that seems to be partially based on the Metropolis from Ratchet & Clank 1 a red tree, and what seems to be an item behind the lasers. This seems to imply that the conveyors were originally supposed to bring out items too, rather than only hazards. The small image does show the golden cork statue as well, but otherwise it's mostly the same as the big image. The final image set that we'll look at is Alden's Tower. Then we'll move on to the next topic in this segment. I'm not really sure what's up with the percentile mark there though, it's likely just a glitch in the encoding for text or something. Here we have Alden's Tower. In the small image we can see what looks to be similar to what we've already seen in other concept art pieces. Unfortunately I can't make out a lot of details about the large image, however it seems to say Furima John Boss Suri Kuaibu, or 35. In total, it says Free Mahjong Boss 35. I don't get it. Is, is that a reference to the infamous game somehow? We also have some graffiti, as well as an anime poster billboard of some kind, and platforms with lights on them. The train car also says Auto Train. There are 12 actual characters. Cole, Drake, Fat Princess, Jack, Kratos, Harappa, Radek, Ratchet, Sly Cooper, Spike, Sweet Tooth, and Toro. Within the game's files and debug are references to and pictures of Evil Cole, Dr. Nefarious, the Descendants from Uncharted, the Eucadian Soldier, Blasto, an unknown dog, Sackboy, and Zeus. Sorry Legend of Dragoon fans, I was hoping for Dart 2. Also within the game are 350 or more debug options, with the primary menus being Debug Cam, Camera, Level, Characters, Render, Video, 
gameplay, UI, fixing, profile, tracking, physics, sound, animation, networking, inspecting objects, destructible, menu controller, effects, input, touch, tuning constants, and internal variables. Many of these menu titles are self-explanatory, so we will only be covering them very briefly. As we go through these menus, I'll talk briefly about what they're for and what they do, but we won't go too in-depth, and we'll show each debug submenu for about 5-10 to 10 seconds, and then we can continue. In addition, if anyone has any questions about these debug functions, feel free to post a comment asking for more information. Unfortunately, we can't display a large part of the music for this build of the game as most, if not all, of the music is copyrighted from outside the game. If possible, I'll upload the entire soundtrack that I can get uploaded in a separate video. The debug functions are as such. Debug cam is about the debug functions of the camera, such as free cam positioning. Camera and camera speed settings are to control the camera's controls, such as speed and tilt settings. Level refers to specific stages, characters to load, and their teams. Characters, player menu, and AI menu all refer to the character's statistics and capabilities, or setting up tag team matches. Render, just as the name implies, renders stuff in different ways. Render, Render Config, Asset Chunk Menu, and Render Test Menu are all about various rendering options. Video is all about if we want to capture video or upload it somewhere, mainly YouTube. Gameplay and its submenus are all about if we want to draw different points on the game's level map, broadcast events, dump rankings, view moves that we can't view otherwise, and similar. UI and the font menu are all about the user interface and making it easier to read or changing it. Fixing, just as the name implies, is about fixing the user interface. But we can't really do the fixing, so it's kind of just a novelty. Profile is about performance and memory usage. Tracking is just that. Tracking optics. Physics is used for tracking collision and gravity. Sound is for audio functions and sound banks. Animation is drawing certain things in certain ways such as the Cake Princess of Niflheim's dress. Networking is mainly networking performance and emulation of it. Inspecting objects focuses the camera on objects and can give information about them, or even manually activate them. Destructible, well, it kind of destructs. Motion controller is for motion controls and enabling the motion controls on the game. Effects and Wisp menu Kind of is about drawing particles and line particles. Input is about seeing inputs visually. Touch is about drawing and enabling boxes and collision. Tuning constants is about the character's influence on objects. And internal variables, or VARs as it's said in the game, is about internal variables like resolution and character controller counts. Next up is the main menu screen. This DVD looking screen, titled Main Menu, is a very simple menu of six menu options. This menu has several options similar to the retail version, but unfortunately it's different in that the leaderboards don't work at all, and the status for your PSN account only shows a JPEG. On occasion, if selecting anything from the second instance of the character selection screen, the game will crash. The menu contains the following. Solo play, with arcade, combat trials, and practice under it, Versus, with local match, tournament, create online game, join online game, and special event under it. Leaderboards, unfortunately this is non-functioning. Title fight feed, this feed is really just a way of telling you how many times you've played, but it doesn't really do anything beyond keep data for the day that you play it on. So even if you log in on another day, it doesn't really do anything for you. Progress is really just a JPEG with some demo data on it. Options is just some options that allow you to change the music volume, the effects volume, and the FGM volume. Within the main menu is the ability to see your PlayStation Network account or saved character stats, as well as displaying which characters played most often. But those options never really panned out. You can see two different characters here, Kratos and Nathan Drake. Also of note, from the demo data, is that the Radic RS achievement did not make it into the game and is most likely a joke. 
An interesting but obvious change between these two games are the character selection screens. This character selection screen difference is quite obvious, but we'll cover them nonetheless. There are four known character selection screens, one of them being the original prototype screenshot made long ago. According to the URL for this image, it was uploaded on the website trenhale.net sometime in June of 2008. Mr. Trenhale himself recently told me, however, that he entered the project late in its development. We theorize that he entered the project in late 2012. As a result, it's likely that he designed the menu and the large portraits and did a great job, but did not design the small character portraits. Ultimately, this means that it is not an early development screenshot and is just a mock-up for the final render of the game. This explains why in Q&A sessions with several developers, none of them knew Ryan Trenhale, as he was likely hired by Sony's PR team to make a mock-up menu image. For more information about those images, including about this image, I suggest visiting trenhale.net. The characters listed here are Kratos, Bat Princess, Harappa, Sweet Tooth, Colonel Radek, Blasto, Dr. Nefarious, Ratchet, Noriko, Sir Daniel, one of Fat Princess's rogues, Sackboy, Sly Cooper, Nathan Drake, Buzz, Jack, the Eucadian Soldier, A Chimera, Cole, Ellen, an unknown dog, the Chernovan Soldier, Spike, Toro, Kulch, an unknown red-clad warrior, one of Fat Princess's warriors, and Master Onion. Then there's also a character selection from Title Fight. The characters listed here are Kratos, Fat Princess, Parappa, Sweet Tooth, Colonel Radek, Sly Cooper, Nathan Drake, Kulch, but it's really Cole, Ratchet, Jack, Spike, Sir Daniel, and Tora. There were further icons uncovered within the data for title fight displaying Kratos, Fat Princess, Parappa, Sweet Tooth, Colonel Radek, Blasto, Dr. Nefarious, Ratchet, Noriko, Sir Daniel, one of Fat Princess's rogues, Sackboy, Sly Cooper, Nathan Drake, Buzz, Jack, the Eucadian Soldier, a Chimera, Cole, Ellen, an unknown dog, the Chernovan Soldier, Spike, Toro, Kulch, and Master Onion. Unfortunately, Kulch's image leads to Cole's data, and Blasto, Dr. Nefarious, Buzz, the Unknown Dog, the Chernobyl Soldier, and the Eucadian Soldier are not selectable. Within Debug, there's also references to Evil Cole, the Descendants, and further references in the data of the game to Sackboy and Zeus. Furthermore, there is also the closed beta character selection. The characters listed here are Kratos, Parappa, Fat Princess, Sweet Tooth, Colonel Radek, and Sly Cooper. There's also an open beta as well as a kiosk demo. In the kiosk demo, it has Kratos, Parappa, Jack and Daxter, as well as Big Daddy. The open beta consisted of Kratos, Fat Princess, Radek, Sly Cooper, and Sweet Tooth. And finally, we have the final character selection screen used in retail. Wait, sorry, that's that's the wrong pick. That's, that's Smash Bros on the Wii. Get the heck out of here. Here's the correct one. I'll just make a backup of this one. There are several other versions to compare after these, such as the E3 trailer from June 4th, 2012, the trailer showing Cat fighting on Twitch, among others. But we'll stick to comparison of what we have so far with Title Fight from December 7th, 2011 to the final build, primarily because most of the refining appears to happen after March of 2012. That's a lot of change in 11 months. Strangely, while the build date is definitely from December of 2011, the write date on the PS3 itself is from January 5th of 2012. Additionally, there is an unknown build with a different main menu which was not seen anywhere else except for the Yuri of Wind video, as well as showing a different appearance for the main menu. Notice that the bottom states that the user SumoBot51 has achieved the trophy Radek RS on February 24th, 2011. This was also shown previously in the main menu for Title Fight. This shows that the idea made it into later versions of the game, but was ultimately scrapped. Next up, we've got the pause menu. We'll be covering the general options, as it seems that it changes depending on the mode and character. This menu has a few different options, such as CPU controls, human controls, for some reason, 
as well as showing a debug function for keeping track of command inputs, among others. Let's take a very quick look. By clicking on the character selection menu and pressing L1 in the Versus or Online Match Creation settings, you can pull up Match Options. The modes available are Free For All and Team Battle. The match type is Stock and Time. Time can be extended to 5 minutes and Stock can have as many as 10 stocks per character. Items can be selected, but it doesn't really do anything. R2 allows for logging into the PSN or selecting a different profile that's installed on the PlayStation 3. By pressing square with a character selected, you may select a new character for the second, third, and fourth characters by CPU or by other players. R1 serves to make the character selection random, which is strange because there's a non-functioning character randomizer option. That's all for this segment. To recap, we've talked about the game's history somewhat, introductions to the game's content, a quick lesson on debug, the game's UI, the character's roster, and the roster's history. Next time, we'll be talking about the stages and stage transitions.